Welcome back to our second part, section one of our photorealistic kitchen render tutorial series. If you have not been able to finish your modeling yet, you may download that file from the description below. So in this session, I'm going to introduce you to the VRA interface, texturing, EVW mapping and hopefully lighting at the end of it. So let's get into it. Uh, before we begin with the VRA interface, you must have your VRA installed, VRA for SketchUp installed in your computer in order to actually have the entire VRA assets showing up on your screen over here. So, so if you click on the asset editor over here, so this is your VRA SketchUp interface. On the left hand side you've got a library of materials which comes with the software. Uh, an entire library from bricks to emissions, emissive materials to paper, to plastic, wall paints, wood laminates and so on. In the middle you've got the, you know, the uh, place where you drag materials in and you get to tweak them on the right hand side. So the right hand side is basically for tweaking your materials and we are currently on the materials tab. I've actually got the textures collected, not the same exact textures, but I have collected my own textures and kept them ready for use. So if I click on the asset editor again and I'm just going to select um, wall paint, yeah, wall paint. If you come down here, you'll see a wall paint simple ref reflective drag. So you hold that and you drag it in the organizer. Yeah. I'm going to bring that color down to black, dark, dark gray. Yeah, basically. So you, you've got wall simple reflective. Rename that by clicking right click on it and just rename it to lower cabinets. So just select that, get out of there, cross that, click on B. So B is basically a bucket. It's your SketchUp Paint tool. And you already have your material selected from B. So it shouldn't be a big problem. And since you've created groups, it should actually help you out in terms of uh, coloring your stuff or texturing. So just click on B and click on one of the groups and it should be completely dark. Yeah, you should have that VA material textures ready on it. So I'm just gonna do the rest of it. So you can finish your texturing of the lower cabinet and get back. So I've finished off the entire texturing bit, but do not worry, I'll be sharing with you all the values for my textures, the textures that I use, the way I manipulated them in order to get the realistic look. So if you go to the asset editor, then if you click on the eyedropper over here and if you select the top slab with the eyedropper you see it, the material gets active in the V-Ray uh, tab. So yeah, follow along with my settings and I'm just going to display the entire settings on screen what I used, what was the reflection values I used for my materials, all the materials, I'm just going to display them on the screen. So for my lower cabinets I used a diffuse of uh, dark gray so the values over here the RGB values you can use them and then my, if you switch on the advanced settings you'll see the reflection values that I used so these are the reflection values I used I also used a bit of coat so that was 0 0.1 eventually which I settled with and a bit of pinkish tone to it I did not use coat bump and I used a very ever so slightly bit of sheen and I put sheen glossiness as 0.8. So sheen is basically used for uh, velvet, velvet type materials. Uh, but again, in order to achieve that realism, you need to tweak, experiment with other materials in order to understand materials properly. So just follow along for this particular tutorial. So these are the values I used for the lower cabinet. I did not use bump eventually as I wasn't getting the right tone as per the picture over here so I just switched off the bump 
you can switch off anything that you're not using basically so yeah so for the marble top for the top slab I already had a text with me downloaded uh, from bing.com actually it was quite a nice texture so this is a marble top texture I used for my diffuse if you go this this is where you can load it actually if you if you basically click on these text slots you can actually load your bitmaps so I actually had my bitmap already loaded in this and then for the reflection bit I manipulated the color a little bit so how do you do that I went I copied my marble texture and I pasted it here so basically what you do is you you basically copy and you wait let me just see that yeah and you just paste as copy so the moment you do that you get into color manipulation and you bring that color gain down to whatever suits your reflectivity and that's how I got the reflection so these are my reflection values my reflection IOR and my bump value which is again I manipulated the same texture in order to create the bump value so I just inverted the texture and did nothing else in order to create a ever so slight bump on this particular material so that's that now for the wall cladding for the wall cladding again I loaded a bitmap which I downloaded from the internet uh, these are my reflection values I never used a reflectivity map for it mm. you may copy the same values if you'd like if you go into the advanced settings so these are my advanced setting values and I used again a bit of bump all I uh, for this one for this particular bump I you basically copy the texture and paste it in your bump map and after you do that you right click on it and you wrap in a spline curve or a mix map so basically for this one I basically used a spline curve so I basically wrapped in a spline curve which automatically wraps in your texture and I reduce the saturation completely so you go into saturation and you drag that so basically you drag that down to that and if you go back it should create a very slight bump depending on the value you put in over here so this was my uh, wall cladding value and for the top marble I forgot to switch to advanced settings so this is my advanced settings for the top slab mm. then for the floor of course for the flooring this is the this was a marble I used again it's the same procedure I'm just going to switch to advanced settings so you take the settings down mm. I did that I used another bump and the same thing for the bump I I actually did not bother to use anything properly for the bump but it should have been done correctly you can wrap in a you can wrap in a spline curve over here if you like so you can wrap in that go to saturation bring that down completely bring the saturation down to that level now, since it was black and white anyways I didn't bother to actually use that spline curve but you can give it a try and increase the bump value or keep it there whatever it is so this is my setting for the flooring and there's another thing that I'd like to talk about before you actually apply the flooring so before you apply the flooring if you select the flooring you see the textures are all set in correctly that is because before you apply using the B button you should go to edit and set, you can actually set the scale over here the way you want it so until it looks suiting to the eye I kept giving it a try so if you put 600 by 600 so you see the scale changes so that's basically simple UV, UVW mapping actually so for me I think 2360 looked fine to me so I set it at that that's under the edit tab in materials uh, in SketchUp so yeah that's about it for the now for the wooden part for the wood cladding these are my settings again so yeah let me bring that up there 
I did not use coat, I did not use sheen for the wood, I used a bit of bump. Yeah. So again they had a I just use I just would use saturation to be honest, completely. And yeah, so that's that's the diffuse map I used. And another thing I'd like to bring to your attention is that make sure your texture placement inside your bitmap is set to 2D UV channel, otherwise I faced many challenges during the VW mapping to be honest. So just set it to 2D UV channel over here. And should be ready to go now. Yeah. So that's the entire texturing bit for this particular model. And so the next thing is gonna be UVW mapping, the way you set the textures the way you move them around in order to make them look good under the under your camera and which will eventually matter to help you achieve that realism so in order to set up your materials correctly you'll have to UVW map them just like in 3ds max and many other any other actually not many other any other 3d softwares and in order to do the UVW mapping or carry out the UVW mapping here all you have to do is select uh, a particular face that you want to map so for example let me just get into this group I want this particular face to be mapped correctly in order to do that you right click and you've got some V-Ray uh, UVW mapping tools actually so there you go V-Ray UV tools you can set it to world you can set it to fit fit is basically it'll fit the entire texture as per the dimension, the X and Y dimension of the texture. The world is, it'll depend on the world origin scale and it'll make the texture, it could possibly make the texture big and might not look good. And then how do we, you know, and if you want to customize, if it's a spherical object, you can use the other two or you can remove the material if you like. And there's another way to UVW map, which is the custom method is positioning. So if you go to texture, and if you click on position it brings up the it brings up the it shows you the entire map actually so you've got options to actually now customize your texture the way you place it so you can custom place your texture the way you like it you can move your texture around first thing if you just left click on it you can just move your texture around so this is the rotation or this is the rotation or scaling tab so this button is either you can rotate your texture the way you like it or you can bring it straight down and in case if you for example if you make a mistake or something you can reset it again it doesn't matter really and so yeah this is your scaling button this is your this is you know defacing i believe this is not exactly scaling so it defaces it distorts yeah so it basically distorts the texture this is moving the texture sideways if you want it to be thin, if you want it to fit a particular place, so this is for that, and this is actually the movement. You can do that with your left mouse click itself. So anyway, so that's your custom UVW mapping in SketchUp. So I'm going to click on done, escape, escape, yeah. So that is it actually, the UVW mapping part. So you can map, you can go ahead and try and map the other parts, for example the slap top actually so if you click on that right click texture position and where did it go i lost again now yeah, there you go so yeah i've placed all of that you can place it the way you like it whatever suits your particular model you can either expand the texture and depending on the texture quality if you right click on it then done and it should be set so that's how i did my texturing basically the UVW mapping and texturing and over here as SketchUp cannot detect the uh, steel material any type of glossy steel materials so if you go into VA asset editor you will see that I've applied a steel bumpy where you, you can get that from the library itself under metal so under metal I went straight down and there's still blurry still brushed still bumpy that's the one I used for my sink so that's it for this part of the tutorial, for this section of the tutorial, hopefully you understood. If you do have any comments or if you do have any questions regarding this part of the uh, tutorial series, 
let me know in the comments below and if you do require any help please feel free to contact me uh, via Facebook or via email or via YouTube thank you